Yeah, because that's, I mean, writers saying, well, this is what we intended doesn't mean that the intents aren't going to change or what have you, right? That's, like you said, until it's on the screen, this is part of my issue with the people freaking out about anything involving Bruce Banner having DID. We don't know that that's what they're going with yet. Yeah. It's and strongly we, implied, but we can't assume. And we don't know it's going to be what they eventually settle on. Right. And even if it's eventually settled, we don't know how long that is going to last. That is the nature of comics. The right. status quo remains as such until a new status quo arrives. Yeah. And it's amazing how many so-called hardcore fans don't understand that that's that's the way comics have always been. I mean, hard continuity is a fairly new thing. Yeah, it it can only be that way when you have a a shared story that is being told by multiple people yeah. over the course of decades. Yeah. Nothing is going to be permanent. Nothing is going to be, this is the one true interpretation and nothing is going to change yeah. that. It's just... That is not how comics work. And you, you never know what's going to hit until somebody does it, right? Yes. Some, some of the stories that, uh, I mean, look at X-Men 97. Uh, you, know, you know what? Let's save X-Men 97. You can come back and talk about X-Men 97. Cause yes, that's I'd love an, to see that, actually. Yeah, <laughs> that's another one that, wow, did they knock that one out of the park? Yes. They, yeah. they are having a, a role lately. <laughs> it's Disney's always been this way. When their television is great, their movies aren't that great. When their movies are great, their television stumbles. It's like they can they only have one eye and they can only keep it <laughs> a, a one thing. I don't know. I, I think part of with, with Marvel is that the whole I get why they had one person doing the whole brain trust. Yes. Uh, it it makes sense in a way, but Kevin, how do you pronounce his last name? Feige, Feige, something Feige. like that. Um, I heard it Feige. Yeah, I'm not he, sure if that's correct. He, I think, got stretched too thin. Me too. And the content started suffering accordingly. And and look, I I feel for him because I am I basically have to be that. For my, right. for my table, for my for my yeah. players, I feel for him. I know I totally pulled something out of my ass. Oh yeah, over the course of again sixteen years, yeah. And and I know I I repeated stories. I know I retconned stuff. Yeah. Some my people and some my players have noticed. Some <laughs> they didn't, and I didn't say anything. Yeah, and. It, I think they need to start splitting it so that somebody's in charge of sort of the witches and werewolves sort of thing. Yes. And some someone's in charge of the uh, particular, you know, certain, they got to segment it so that there's lieutenants under yes. Feggy so that Feggy, sorry, I'm back to the Yiddish word for bird. Uh, but it's uh he it is too much for one person at this point and you can't have you know what happened with the loki showrunner who episode three i wanted to be about sylvie and there were apparently <laughs> two sylvie backstories and sylvie never worked i was really hoping they were gonna fix that in season two but they just oh, sort of like too. no they just sort of gave up uh, but there's an example of, I think that's the other thing that Agatha did well. It's her name on the show and it yes. was about her. Yes. It, it Even... wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a show named Ahsoka with a Rebels reboot. Like, oh. <laughs> you know, if you you're name right, it, right. and I, I do like the fact that they're allowing them to change the titles in development now. That's Me good. Too. Yeah. Because if somebody's name is on the show, it better be yeah, about them. The show. Yes. Yeah. And it was about her even with Billy, which is arguably one of the biggest characters there is 
and has a huge fan base and you know sharing the screen with a lot of huge actor this the show was still about her they had death on the show and she and agatha was still the most important part of it and that's by sheer charisma really i mean joe Locke could have taken that show over he's he was having so much fun in the costumes Oh my God. Yes. Oh God. He was like, I was born for this when he was dressed as Maleficent. I I I can't tell you how much my 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 baby nerd Marvel fan heart screamed yeah. when yeah. I saw that they uh they gave him the costume in the final episode. Total, the weekend costume. Total comics accurate costume. Yes. With he, the the raggedy cloak and yep. everything. Gotta be gay enough to pull that off. They did not oh hetero God. that suit at all and good for them. I was so happy. Uh, yep. I'm a, you know, I'm a huge Young Avengers fan. Yep. Uh, I'm I'm probably one of five hardcore fans of Khan the Conqueror um, and the Young Avengers. I love the whole run. So I knew he was going to be on the show. Uh, people on the Discord were say, "Well, who do you think it is?" Yeah, it's, it's Billy. Oh, that that, it's that Billy. was that <laughs> was not that was not really hidden. There yeah, was there's no doubt. There's stuff that I can say, like because they did a, a not Pietro in one division. Yes, that I'm yes, that yes. I'm willing to say I think it's this character, but we can never be really truly sure. No, right. with Billy, I was like, no, it's no Billy. It's, it's yeah, it, it it can't be anything else. Yeah, so I knew he was going to be in it. Right. I wasn't expecting that he was going to be in the suit. Oh, interesting. Because, like, I thought after, um, God, I almost called it House of M, um, Multiverse of Madness. That's right. The you finally connected to Wanda's the hideous stuff she did <laughs> in, <laughs> in Wandavision. Because, come on, what she did in Wandavision was ghoulish. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> and it, I think one of the refreshing things about Agatha is you're allowed to say she was a bad person, not like these uh, Wanda fangirls. Oh no, it was all trauma. Like you still, <laughs> you still, Wanda fangirls are freaking terrifying. And the fact that they were mad at Multiverse of Madness because she was the villain, I was happy. Because, yeah, I like, you know, you know, I'm, I'm a huge Wanda fan. But I know that the vibe with Wanda is that she's always like a bad morning away from destroying a yeah. whole world. Oh, yeah. She is one bad Starbucks order away from losing it. And yeah, I and, did. And you can argue it's because. Everyone on her team is shitty to her, and they only go to her when they need her. And or she's Magneto's her. kid, and therefore yeah. prone to psychopathy. Yeah, it's yeah. like, and and yes, you know the the line that she has in Multiverse of Mad Madness is true. I do this, and I am the villain. You do the same thing, and you're a hero. It yeah. doesn't her. Yes, point to her, but also. She is just like Agatha. She's not a hundred percent a good character, and when she does bad stuff, it's really, really, really bad stuff. And it's okay to be a fan of Wanda, but you kind of have to live with the fact that she's not going to be a poor little baby victim the whole time, right? Because it defeats the character, right? She was never, she's one of the most powerful, well, depending on whether she's a mutant or not in a particular continuity, she's either an Omega level mutant or she's an incre an incredibly powerful, you know, forget what, what do they call them in Marvel? They call them metahumans in, do they call them metahumans in Marvel? Uh, kind of. Yeah, I forget yes. what they call let's, them. Let's go metahumans, yes. Yeah, but, you know, she's incredibly powerful. Like, stupid, stupid powerful. Like, OP powerful. Yes, like, uh, she's 
she made an entire universe. Yeah, yeah. And she and, and she didn't even wanted to. And having that much power makes you a bit nuts or a lot yeah. nuts. Like Wanda's and... unstable, and that's canon. And I do think that WandaVision sacrificed her being interesting for being quote unquote likable. Yes. Whereas Agatha all along didn't make that mistake. No, yeah. Agatha said, look, Agatha isn't a good person. We're just yeah. going to roll with it. Yeah. And you can argue that she is m morally gray, more yes. than evil. I, I agree with that. She's she's chaotic good. Yeah. She's, yeah, it's kind Next of right? chaotic. It's kind Next of good. Neutral, yeah, I, she is a deal maker, isn't she? Yeah, she's a survivor. Yeah, she's a neutral good character in terrible circumstances, essentially. Precisely. Yeah. Uh, so I get where they're coming from, the, the Wonder fans. It is fair, I think, to to point out the sexism that Wanda does, but Dean, oh, but Wanda. Uh, Tony Stark does the exact same thing or worse, and oh no, he's a hero. You know how I feel about Tony Stark. Yes. <laughs> For people who don't know yet, Eileen and I met because I called Tony Stark a war criminal. And then we and she a, commented. A, and it, was like, it. <laughs> it was like a three day back and forth of yes. pretty deep <laughs> Marvel lore. And then we were friends. It, it was almost like a superhero origin meeting, right? Yeah. Uh, they meet, fight over something really not important, but you just need them to meet so then they can team up. And and, and we will we've been talking about this thing ever well, since. It's, it's just a hilarious thing because people like it's so hard to meet people these days. It's so hard to make friends. I'm like, just call Tony right? Stark a war criminal, right? It brings out <laughs> the good people. <laughs> it's, it's been it's been especially funny to me uh, when when we well you have people said oh is uh you only surround yourself with people who who agree with you or, <laughs> or, or yes or people who have called me your minion and i'm like you guys you guys don't know how she and i became friends uh, also what <laughs> yes it, it's kind of i i never call someone on the anti-semitism of saying i have minions nor the disappointment of them not being the adorable little yellow guys from despicable me because <laughs> i'd take those kind of like you know banana kind of minions i mean that'd be awesome right but, they're adorable they're hard workers <laughs> and and that I guess to round it off, that's a good point of something that really spoke to me about Agatha all along that I didn't mention is the fact that she sort of is driven because they deal with the legend of her, right? Yes. And she's like, well, people are going to just make shit up about me anyway. So I might as well get something out of it. And that's a, a very real reality for real reality. Good one. Uh, of women who try to do anything meaningful is it's yes. just people and, and and it's you know it is that same thing of Wanda does it bad Wanda Tony does it he's a hero men are allowed to be the mouthiest motherfuckers on the goddamn planet and call each other out and get into these massive brawls right but women go, you said what about me? And people are like, oh, you should keep it private. Yeah. It's not fair. Don't dirty, uh, dirty laundry. Yeah, like, don't, no, that's undignified. Like, it's a bad look. <laughs> I, I can never keep track of which guy is scrapping with which guy on YouTube every week. And then, no, they're okay now. No, they're fighting again. And it's okay for men it's, to do it more than okay it is apparently expected yeah well because it's all it's authentic right yeah but they women... are thirty strong personalities yeah whereas if women do it and and this is not to to soapbox whether this is right or wrong or objectively true or not i'm talking about relating to the feelings driving agatha 
right? Because you you get into this thing of people will find the one exception of, oh, no, it's not just sexism. You're just unlikable. Or it's not sexism. You're just a bitch at yeah. not, not recognizing. I have, I have this woman that doesn't do it and say, see, you, you're wrong. Yeah, I, it's not that I don't like women. I just don't like that woman is the age we're living in. And yes. the fact that people are willing to embrace a very flawed female character without all the hand-holding that they tried to do. You know, they didn't try to make Agatha. They they went for actively unlikable right on yes. with all that and, hammy acting and everything like that. It, it and was, you just like her more as a result. Yeah, she was allowed to be a person. And that that shouldn't be so that shouldn't be as amazing as it is but it is like it was yes. just so refreshing that she was allowed to be a damn person it was it was a different kind of show in which um you and i shared the the fact that shows aren't usually made for us like right. centering on us and we learned to to see ourselves in other characters right. and to enjoy them like as they are. This is probably the first show that yeah. is centering us as an audience. It's and for it, it's for women. It's for different type of women, not yeah. just the one woman. And, uh, and yes. I think that there's no there's no possessiveness over Agatha. Um, the way there was over Jen Walters, because let's face it, she didn't sleep her way through half the MCU. Yes. <laughs> and unfortunately, that was the thing I think they either didn't factor in with She-Hulk or did the, well, too bad. It's not for you anymore, which is always a mistake. Always yeah. a mistake. But yeah, I think people were like i don't want to i don't want a witch show i don't want to watch a witch show i'm not gonna like that and then they got caught napping on it and the word of mouth brought them in and it wasn't the the preconceptions weren't there the same way yes and, and, and i and i think the fact that the show didn't cost a ton was and and it was a witch show that they brought on on Halloween, so it was just sort of sort of naturally ah, it's a witch show on Halloween. Yeah, yeah. They they went about it smarter, and I think as well. Agatha is another example of like um, Tom Holland's Spider Man. She didn't have to carry her first show. Yes, but so but she she stole it. But she didn't yes. have to carry it. But let's face it, that's what that Spidey did in Civil War. You know, uh -huh. his his four scenes. I was like, oh, my God, I love him. Me because too. He didn't have to carry the whole movie. It wasn't about him. He just had to be adorkable. In and still she show up. Right, right. And that's the way to do it. I think that that that's really the formula they should use going forward is have a character in something before the show they helm. I think that if uh, Kamala Khan had been in something before her show, more people would have watched. Me too. And I thought, I thought Ms. Marvel was another one. I didn't think it was that expensive, but apparently it was more expensive than Agatha. Because of the CGI, yeah. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. The, whole, um, the 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 shiny energy CGI apparently <gasps> was like... right. The uh, yes. the platforms. Yes. The the solid energy. Yeah, I guess that would be pretty pricey. All right. So before we wrap, now that we've decided you'll come back to talk about X Men ninety seven, anything else you want to say? Any final thoughts on Agatha? Uh... <laughs> uh that that is going to leave in my mind now. Agatha. Uh... <laughs> yes, thank you for that. <laughs> uh, no, I I love it. I I love people getting invested in her. 
yeah. Uh, yeah. to the point that they are bring her, bring her into comics because Catherine Hahn made made her so popular. Right. Even we even though Ghost Agatha predated, we you know we already have the story for season, uh, season two. They yeah, just have to do that. To children's Crusade, yep. but better. Probably about finding Tommy instead of finding that uh, finding Wanda. Well, <laughs> and Agatha getting her body back at the end. Yes, that's that's the story. It's already written. Like we know what to do. Just write it. Uh, so I I love it. I love watching people talk about it and mm -hmm. making theories and engaging with it. Uh, like a few of the other shows, I like that I see more women talking mm -hmm. about it. I like that it centered women, especially women like us, who don't mm -hmm. often get centered in the other girl media, like uh, romantic movies. We are not romantic no. movies type of people. No. But this no. show, this show was for us. So I'm getting to meet more people like us talking about it. Yeah, that's that's a more. that's a good point. There's no um everybody can share this thing in a yes. way that isn't quite so uh, adversarial, I guess is yeah, like being girlish. Yeah, it it didn't it doesn't have the same I don't know, there was there wasn't this yowling about it the way there yeah, was like, about if you yeah, are a friend yeah. account then get the fuck out it, it didn't happen with this show yeah, i'm very glad for it it's weird too because ms marvel in the comics was supposed to be the marvel comics wonder woman that yes. was the whole point of it so the idea that she was ever created you know exclusively or primarily for a male audience in this incarnation um you know, going back to who wrote that book? I know uh, Frank Cho did the first cover, but was it Mark Miller who wrote the? Yeah, I think it was. I'd have to look it up. But that book was always written to appeal to women who read yes. comics. So that that one caught me kind of off guard, especially since that Warbird costume was. They they took a few liberties with it, but it it predated the one that everybody knew with the the black and the yellow zigzag. Um, yeah, yeah. And that that was a straight. That was one of those ones that just got away from them. And I think that making these shows that are less expensive that people can just find is a good idea, precisely because you don't have to do the marketing bonanza that one five second bit in a trailer or one gotcha question by a member of the media just gets everybody all upset they don't have to do that because they can like, let people find it i also like that it finished like at the end they tease that she's coming back and they're going to go after tommy but the the story the art for this year it started it had a climax. It finished. That's it, the, yeah. That's the final episode wasn't a a cameo announcing the next big thing. I love that. That's an excellent point. That it didn't feel like all Act One to tease or set up something else that was Act Two, and that it it was a beginning, middle, and end. It was a contained story. The fact that that's such a bre breath of fresh air. Is a yes. little bit sad, but I know the bars you know, on the floor. Still, uh, you're right. The bars on the floor, but at least they're kind of taking the notes a little. Yeah, hopefully you, you can see that they took the notes from Wanda Vision and they said, "Okay, how can we make this, but improve on these things that the audience isn't like," and they fit them. Yeah, I I do think they they Im they improved without repudiating the original because there are there were a lot of really hardcore fans yeah. of WandaVision. Um and and they weren't afraid to to make fun of them. Right. Uh, they even had 
Ralph Bonner make a cameo. That <laughs> like that, that was good though. I liked how they yes. used him. Uh I like that they they had him back and it was like, okay, look, we know what we did. It was funny. We're just going to have fun with it. Well, well, he's just also the guy who shows up midway through a WandaVision show. Yes. Because they did that the first time, right? Is Oh, he was there, but not playing the character. It's just the actor. Or is he, right? Yes. Uh, Billy also asked him, hey, uh, do you have powers? And he doesn't really say no. No. Yeah, I noticed that. Like, I don't know. Maybe. Billy got to reincarnate. Maybe Ralph Bonner now will be the new Pietro. We don't know. It's there if they want to grab it. I mean, now Loki's literally pulling the strings of the entire MCU. There is no retcon out of bounds anywhere. Yes. So it's everything goes. They could do that. That's part of the thing that I like, but also scares me a little bit about that whole development is it handled properly, it could be really good. Handled oh, like the really way good. they did, yeah, handled like the way they did the multiverse, maybe not so much, but un uh, in in the spirit of Tuam and talking, I've tried to rap four times. I'm going to rap for real <laughs> this time, but this has been epic comic nerding. So Eileen, thanks for coming on. It's great for people to to hear from you instead of just hearing about you, right? And the- uh, uh, Yeah, thank you for having me. The house is being repaired as we speak, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, by, uh, the, by the time this airs, it might be finished, we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be, um, they told me anything from one, one week, week and a half, depending on weather. Wow. Uh, yes. I'm I I I am impressed with the professionalism and the, the how fast they're doing it. It's uh, it's astounding. Yes, uh, apparently we got lucky in that the the company that we reached out to to the one that produced the amount mm -hmm. they had uh, some sort of project that it didn't fell through but it was delayed. Okay. So uh, the day the the crowdfund was completed, I went talk to my family. I told them we're going to have the money as soon as GoFundMe keeps it. And they went, they talked to them, they draw up a contract. And that same day, they had an opening, mm -hmm. which uh, we took. And Apparently, that's the spot that we are getting. Otherwise, okay. it would have been probably a couple months until. Really? Until yes. Wow. So it was it was lucky, lucky from all sides of this. Um, and since we are talking about it, thank you again for everything you did, the the advice you gave me, the confidence you gave me to 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 do it. To begin with, because it was, um, it was Lagatha all along. It was. <laughs> it was me. It was all me. Wig. <laughs> uh, no, uh, thank you, and thank you to the people from from this audience who went up and to the Uh I know that without you having my back, both as support and advice, this wouldn't have happened. We had plans contingencies they weren't they weren't good plans but this is the best possible scenario so thank you so much yay all right everybody you heard it we did some spider-man shit so we talked about marvel thanks everybody for listening